And uh, one thing that comes up a lot, like a lot, 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 and was kind of the, or one of the early objections to say the Atkins diet, I guess. I mean, I wasn't in the medical field yet um, at that time. Like in the, I mean, I was growing up in the nineties and then, you know, I'd hear about it and then people would be like, oh, that somebody lost a bunch of weight on the Atkins diet, but uh, they're going to have a heart attack. You know, <laughs> look at all this stuff they're eating, um, which is kind of a funny uh, description in retrospect <laughs> in a lot of ways. Um, but, uh, but this comes up a lot because if you eat more fat, one of the things that may happen is you might have a higher level of LDL, um, cholesterol, the so-called bad cholesterol has been for many years termed bad cholesterol. Um, it always in quotes. <laughs> um, and then in fact, a couple days ago, um, or maybe it was just yesterday, there, there was a CNN headline that uh, that you shared with me, uh, but this comes up all the time, but this is like a new study, yeah. a new paper um, that's talking about this again. And the headline was something like, um, in fact, I've, I think I've got it right here. Let me pull it up. Keto-like diet may be associated with a higher risk of heart disease, according to new research. And I just want to read like the first sentence or so, just because it's kind of comical in some ways, but it says a low carb, high fat, keto-like diet may be linked to higher levels of bad cholesterol and double the risk of cardiovascular events such as blocked arteries, heart attacks, and strokes, according to new research. Um, but <laughs> since this comes up so often, and I'm sure people ask you about it, and they're probably asking you about this latest study, yeah. um, what are your thoughts about that topic and about that study? Uh, well, um, yeah, my uh, inbox is still full of uh, emails about that from STEM Talk listeners and I will answer them all, but there are a lot of them. So <laughs> You're going to start using, copying and pasting. Uh, cut yeah. and paste and, yeah, yeah. you know, adjust it to each person. But, uh, you know, really this is a hit piece and it's nothing to do mm -hmm. with science. It's sort of an example of the absurdity of the media publishing an article based entirely on a press release. So they have access to no study. There is no study. This was a paper presented at a conference that, the media wasn't at the people who did the paper produce a press release. Probably their media office did the press release and they're notoriously inaccurate. Uh, and there's a lot you could say about that, but none of this is peer reviewed science. It's also nutritional epidemi epidemiology, which is one of the least reliable parts of science if it is part of it. Mm -hmm. But also the probability of any of the people being on a well-formulated diet is near zero. One of the things that should tip someone off, the paper is full of quotes with people having nothing to do with the study. So uh -huh. you see numerous quotes from Christopher Gardner, who is sort of a quote machine whenever yeah. you want a negative quote about keto. And he's a passionate opponent of keto, which a scientist should not be... Uh, like have an agenda, they should go where the data leads them. And um, he never mentions it. And it's never mentioned in the articles, um, but he's the director of the plant-based diet initiative. So most of the people that are very um, uh, passionate about only plant-based consumption are very anti-keto from almost like a, a faith-based uh, side, or a, they're very passionate about it. Now, it's well known and has been known way before this conference paper that a ketogenic diet can in increase LDL levels in somewhere between 20 and 30% of the people that do it. So this is a known phenomena. And it's important to note, unlike that first sentence you read, an elevation of LDL caused by a dietary change is not a strong predictor of heart disease at all. And it certainly doesn't double the risk, as the paper said. That's just absolute nonsense. There are a lot of other things besides LDL that change. So you typically see a significant increase in HDL. You typically see lower triglycerides. And most importantly, you see a change in the particle size of LDL. LDL by itself tells you almost nothing, unless it's like 600 or something. And then you have an actual disease. You have an inherited genetic disorder. But for the vast majority of people, LDL is meaningless without knowing particle size and particle count. So you need to know APOE B. You need to know, you know, you need to know LDLP, the number of particles. 
just having your physician tell you what your total cholesterol is and what your LDL is, is close to a waste of time. And this will change, but it takes 15 to 20 years for these changes to happen uh, clinically, which is a shame. And then of course, there's all kinds of other cardiovascular risk factors unrelated to cholesterol, which they seem uninterested in. But blood pressure, insulin sensitivity, inflammatory markers all typically get better. So it's, it's um, a very bad piece of work and it's an intentional hit job by the reporter. You know, so there, there's, she has, the person who wrote the article has no data, has no paper to reference. It's just, uh, oh, good, let's, uh, but the damage is done because the general public will see that and think, aha, you know. And while we're talking about these biomarkers, uh, you know, a, a simple calcium scan is useful and very predictive. You know, it's a non-invasive T CT scan that will tell you to what, you de what degree are you building plaque in your arteries. And that's something that inexpensive, easy to get, and it's not a biomarker, it actually shows the development of disease. And then even within that, there are different densities of calcium. And there are new technologies now that will tell you, well, you have this kind of unsettling calcium score, but the density is the following and you, you don't need to worry very much or you do, right? So things are more complicated than good cholesterol and bad cholesterol. Yeah. So like you said, there's, there's, uh, quite a few issues with that so-called study. I say so-called study because as you mentioned, it's observational research and <laughs> it, actually there's, I don't know if you've heard of it, but there's this uh, substack called sensible medicine. They also have a podcast. And one of the things they hit last year that I thought was interesting is there's seven deadly sins of journalism, what they call journalism, which is like churning out headlines based on different uh, often yeah. observational research and things like that. And this, this article hit, uh, committed a few of those deadly sins. And one of them is mistaking correlation for causation, which is like the most kind of fundamental thing. Um, and then anything that has like dietary questionnaires, um, as kind of their source of oh, their data, yeah. it's going to be ridiculously yeah. inaccurate. Um, and be. then furthermore in that article, they did the thing where about halfway through, they put a bunch of disclaimers and, but then they, they're like, you know, this can't show causation, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, it's different for everyone and blah, blah, blah. And, but then they pivot is disclaim and pivot is one of the deadly sins to so put right. the disclaimer, but and quote <laughs> people. Yeah. Right. And then they have a giant photograph in the article of a young man clutching his oh, chest. Oh, yeah. That's like the, the featured image at the top. If that's not a clue, <laughs> it's it's a hatchet job, you know? Yeah. The quote that you mentioned from uh, Dr. Gardner, I guess. Gardner. I, I noticed that and I, I read that and I was like, wow, that's really weird. It says, this study provides an important contribution to the scientific literature, which first of all, sounds a little crazy because it's just like observational research and it's not, you know very reliable of course it's not a paper or anything there's no paper there's no peer-reviewed journal article yeah it's like a there's nothing yeah it hasn't been peer-reviewed or anything yeah so he says it provides an important contribution and then says and suggests the harms outweigh the benefits said christopher gardner um and yeah. and so i'm like it, that's kind of laughable to say that this would be the reason it why doesn't suggest anything like that. <laughs> why you would say the harms of the ketogenic diet outweigh the benefits